anyone else anyone else with any questions any comments about the first four units any problems anything uh that's concerning them okay obviously unit four is my favorite unit yeah good uh, <laughs> yeah good evening uh muhammad and happy new year to everyone as well uh lovely okay so just out of interest, what did you think of using screencast? Has anyone got any comments on screencasting on unit four? Did you think that was interesting? Do you see lots of possibilities? Is it something that you would use? Be interested to hear if anyone's got to either write something in the, in the chat window or turn on their microphone and comment just before we start. Uh, so Mohammed, yes, please. Yes, uh, good evening, Graciela and everyone and happy new year for all. Uh, I just want to ask about the uh, option of recording in the PowerPoint. Which one is uh, is better to use the PowerPoint recording option or using uh, VL uh, cast in the auto uh, auto cast? Which one is the, the the best? It's a really good question. Now I know that PowerPoint has been vastly improved, but the files the video files from powerpoint are very big so it depends really um where you're going to put that video so if for example you're going to put it into the microsoft sharepoint if you're going to put it straight into there when you do your recording in powerpoint i guess that's fine there's no problem but if you're planning on downloading that recording then really using PowerPoint might be a problem because the file sizes are much bigger than the file sizes when you work with Screencast-O-Matic. So I think it really matters where you're placing that recording after. Now, I have to say, Mohammed, just to make it very clear, I haven't worked with the very latest PowerPoint. So maybe PowerPoint now has learned to compress the videos and make them much smaller. But definitely in the past, the way that PowerPoint was doing the recordings meant that the file sizes were much bigger than the file sizes when you use screencast on matic Okay. So just, uh, it's a really good question. So probably the answer is that screencast o -Matic might be the better solution uh, unless PowerPoint has updated, but certainly in the previous versions of PowerPoint, the file sizes of a screen recording were really big. Okay, lovely question. Good. And guys, any more questions uh, while just before we get started? Okay, so I've got quite a few of you coming in now. There's about 10 of you joined the room now. So just to say to those new people that are joined the room, just to say Happy New Year to you as well. And oh God, we've got more and more people coming in. <laughs> Lovely. So one moment, one moment. More and more people coming in. So we're up to 11 people now into the room. OK, so I will repeat it just in case before we start. Has anyone got any questions or any problems that they want to mention to me regarding the course from units one to units four? OK. OK, right. Let's get started with today. OK, so. so uh just to give you a little bit of background. So for me, unit four of this course is the most important unit. It's the one that really uh, is the eye opener in terms of the technology, screencast o -Matic, screencast technology, the options of how we can use it, how it can revolutionize both blended learning, teaching in the classroom, feedback, speaking, assessment. Absolutely amazing. But the unit I'm doing at the moment, the one that I'm gonna show you now, is really interesting to me personally because I am currently learning Polish. And this is really, actually, this is, I mean, this is my third language, serious language, apart from English, okay? I've also studied two other languages, but only a little bit. But this is my third major language. So it was Spanish, French, and now Polish, and of course, English. Now, this is really interesting because I'm learning Polish in the year 2023. I started in 2021, 2020. So it's a very modern day version of learning. I am making use of audiobooks. I am using YouTube all the time. I am using Quizlet. I am using Google Translate. 
I am using podcasts. Now, learning has really changed and the options to develop students and help students to learn on their own have enormously changed because of technology. I've tried to say to you quite a lot on this course that really where technology can have a big impact on teaching and learning is outside of the class. It's when I'm on, my, on the bus and I'm listening to a podcast or I'm on the train and I'm studying Quizlet or I'm listening to YouTube or when I go to bed at night and I often listen before I go to sleep using my phone or sometimes using my computer. I get up in the morning study with my computer. I can learn so much more these days than I could when I was learning French and Spanish, or I can do it in a much easier way than I could. Learning has changed. The opportunities for learning have changed. They have increased. There is no doubt. The biggest impact for me, in my opinion, for technology is outside of the lesson. It's not the time in the class. You have a good lesson with a teacher. You're with them for two hours. Okay. But when I leave the lesson, I've got hundreds of hours spare. I've got a whole week of, of, of 148 hours or something like that that I can be studying on my own. OK, so this is really where the power of working with or using technology and helping our students to become more autonomous. And that's what we're going to be looking at this week and i'm going to be very specific all of you in this room today i'm going to show you some things that i'm hoping you've never seen that you can show your students so just going to open up a really quick powerpoint presentation it's literally just a couple of slides nothing more than that at all let me just kind of get it onto the screen one second i needed to actually hang on a minute i thought i'd opened it up yes i did good 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 Lovely. So I'm just going to screen share this. OK, one minute. And click on screen share, click on PowerPoint. There it is. We're going to click on this. And I've just got one big and very important question for you. Got two parts to the question, but really it's the same. It's the same question. All right. In two parts. Autonomous learning. What things do you do? to help your students learn independently? Are any of your ideas to connect it to technology? Now, I want to know anything. It doesn't have to be technology-based. It can be technology-based or non-technology-based. But I'm very interested to hear any of you either write in the chat window or turn on your microphone and explain, what do you do to help your students learn on their own? Because really, Language learning, we can support our students and help them to learn a language, but really where the learning takes place is outside of the lesson. I play the guitar. I have an hour's lesson every month. I don't learn the guitar in the one hour with my teacher. I learn the guitar in the hours and hours and hours and hours that I spend practicing on my own. And the same with my Polish. So that's my question to you. What things do you do? to help your students to develop autonomously. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to hopefully get a few people to answer this question, either right in the window or turn on, put up your, your hand and I will come to you. Mohammed's got his hand up already. So I'd love to hear, Mohammed what you've got to say. Please. Yes, thank you, Russell. If I go back to uh, my past uh, experience as a student in the university, uh, I was recording the BBC uh, a transmission in the radio and in, in cassette. We can consider this as part of technology, early technology. Uh, nowadays, I encourage teacher to uh, and students to watch YouTube, uh, to use also uh, applications using uh, Google Play. We have a lot of application new. Every year we have uh, uh, new uh, applications that help the teachers and the students even for early grades to practice their English. So it's about technology uh, uh, all the time. Right. Listen, first of all, Mohammed, your idea of recording the BBC um, um, transmissions, what a brilliant idea. And I did something very similar in the past when I only had a cassette player. 
people listening to recording things in French as well. So absolutely brilliant idea. It's a perfect example of a use of a technology. It's an older technology, but I mean, it would still work now if you wanted to do it. But obviously, there are easier ways these days. But yes, absolutely wonderful. And then the point that you're making about YouTube, and I'm going to show you some things in YouTube today that I think I'm really going to open your eyes. You might not know. I'm hoping, Mohammed, that I'm going to show you something completely new about how useful YouTube can be. But YouTube, obviously, is an incredible source of material for our students. And we, the point I'm going to make today is that we need to learn things about these technologies that we can then pass on to our students so they can do them. We've got to help our students to become more effective at learning outside of the class. And often that can be very prescriptive we have to show them specific things okay so really nice points Muhammad totally agree and I've got that ma ma marwa marwa you've got your hand up so would you like to um speak next um yeah I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly in English it would be marwa and in Polish it would be marwa so I'm not sure which one but the would you you got your hand up Marva or Mar Marwa. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so actually, there are several ways uh, that we can help uh, students be um, autonomous when we're talking about learning English as a foreign language. But uh, the two most effective ways uh, that I found really working with my students, one of them is uh, connected to the video journal. So simply, um, you can find some students interested in writing what happens to them every day. So in order to encourage them to speak, uh, I can ask them to report what's happening to them on a daily basis, maybe on a weekly basis, depending on their schedule. And uh, they can, by the end of the first month, the second month or the third month, compare what's happening or how they speak on the first video to the last video. So this is going to encourage them to see how their performance is developing over time. And they can do this on their own. Like I don't have to check with them on a daily basis what they're doing, but by the end of the two month, three month, or maybe four month, we can share some videos uh, with some students. This is an idea. And another idea is based on a book called Reading Power, which is actually connected to pleasure reading or how to make reading uh, like a, a live uh, continuing uh, activity through which they can learn more vocabulary, they can learn more about grammar and above all enjoy reading. So actually they learn some few steps about how to choose a book and actually they can feel free choosing whatever kind of book they, they want to read about based on their interest. So it's basically about what they're really interested in and what they really enjoy because it's all about pleasure. And there is a chart uh, through which they can calculate the number of words that they can read per minute. And from time to time, we can have like a circle, like a reading circle, in order to follow up what's going on on their reading process, what kind of problems that they are going through. By the way, sometimes they even suggest some solutions to their own problems or the problems of their own peers. So um, this, this is making a little bit, you know, uh, reading a part of their learning process, which is really difficult these days to get lots of students read. But when they are interested in what they're reading, uh, specifically if they have access to eBooks or sometimes audiobooks, if they if you want to combine both listening and reading at the same time. And above all, they learn some other skills that can help them on the long run um, in taking international tests such as the TOEFL, the TOEIC, the IELTS and so on. Lovely. OK, really, really like your points. All right. Let's just go over a couple of those points. The first one about the video journals, a fantastic idea, something I've experimented with in the past. I was very interested in the idea of my students recording themselves speaking. OK, and either with a webcam or using screencast technology, doing that every day, probably quite a lot of work. OK, but perhaps doing it once a week or something. I think that's really realistic. The students could learn to think every week, well, what have I learned? What progress have I made? What could I improve? What, what did I do this week to try to improve, okay? Some kind of reflective journal, a little bit like you've just done in unit three of my, or unit four of my course, okay? I think that's a really good idea. Now, one thing I would say about that, if you're gonna do something like that, make sure that you train the students in the class first, how to do that before you get them to do it. Don't just give them that as homework. You need to connect it to the class. 
these activities often if we want to get students to do things like that and i think it's brilliant you've got to plant the seed in the lesson and show them how to do it so that then they can then go off and do it on their own and i really like this idea that marva mentioned that every so often you get together and look at those videos don't just leave them in in isolation i made the mistake before with my blog i never brought it back into the class the students kept the blogs on their own no you've got to bring the blogs into the lessons continually to make them connect to the class it's really really important okay so i love that point at all the one about reading i'm reading mad i love reading i think reading can really encourage and again my thing would be connecting it to the classroom. An interesting idea is to get everyone to read the same book. And then you might give them just a chapter to read or even half a chapter, just a few pages at the beginning. And then when you come into class, get them to talk about it. So, right, okay, here's five questions about chapter one of the book. What answer, get into groups, discuss the questions. Connect it back to the class. Don't leave these things in isolation. What we want to do, and the things that Marva has mentioned are really good ideas, is plant the seed. Maybe then the students might start reading on their own. Maybe the students might decide to keep their own videos. These kind of ideas where we're being very specific. We're not saying, yeah, look, here's lots of interesting links. Go and look at them. No, they won't do anything. We're giving them specific, specific recipes. Very, but we're being very, very prescriptive, okay, about what it is they need to do, okay? And this, I think, is really, really important. So I really like those two points. Nevin, I hope I'm pronouncing your name as right. Would you like to come in, make your comments, yes. please? Yes, yep. okay. Yes, Nevin. Uh, one of the things which I use with my students to make sure that they can pronounce correctly is to use the WhatsApp ability of the mic. Uh, I, I advise them to start to brainstorming their ideas to write a paragraph. And then I ask them to read it and the ask is the mic of the WhatsApp to write it directly. Okay. And uh, encourages right them to it. make sure that they pronounce the words correctly. Okay. And also, explain it again. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. What What did you do? Can you explain to me again? What, there what, is what, what, there what, is a voice recognition ability what, of the mic that okay, it on, starts to write immediately. Yeah. You speak. Yes. Okay. Yes. For example, in Google Docs, you can do that. Yes. Correct. Yes, and on the WhatsApp, we uh, yeah. we have WhatsApp. a WhatsApp group for the class. Yeah. So I ask them to just turn on the mic recognition to so that they can, the the mic can write what they say. So okay. if they pronounce correctly, they they are the mic is going to write exactly what they pronounce. So okay. I can, can make I sure that they. The lovely yeah. idea, but can I just understand why does that help them to become more independent learners? Let just explain. Uh, that. Because sometimes they are embarrassed to speak in class, okay. and also I ask them to correct before sending the message on the WhatsApp. Okay. So that okay. they are going to make sure that the spelling is correct and that okay. the voice recognition is correct, uh, okay. so that I can make sure of the speaking and the writing abilities. Right. It's I really one of like the this idea. It's a nice idea, okay? It's a nice idea, and I understand the point you're trying to make, okay, about it helping them to kind of make their own decisions, to empower them to make decisions, to kind of check their own work, etc. So, yes, that is a really nice and, idea. And then they started to comment on each other paragraph. They started yep. to give their opinion about what they, uh, their colleagues has just written and to give a short comment on it so that yep. I can make sure that they understand the ideas and they can and they have the ability to write a well-organized paragraph. Yeah, okay. Naveen, I really like your ideas, okay? And I do agree with you. They are empowering the students to, to become more independent, to make more decisions on their own, okay? Why, and, and there is almost two elements to autonomy. Mm -hmm. One element is the psychological thing of the students making more decisions themselves, not being guided by the students, being freed up, being empowered. This is what Benson talks about, an almost psychological dimension. What I'm actually more interested in this unit of our course and today, and what I'm going to show you is being very specific about things that the students can do on their own, okay, on their own to actually learn a language, okay? So your one is more in the kind of empowering them 
allowing them to make independent decisions. So there's definitely a psychological element to it. What I'm more interested in, and your idea is kind of in both fields, but is the very specific things that we can teach the students to do on their own. For example, the idea of students recording themselves using a video and then being able to do that every single week or reading on their own or, for example, using Quizlet to study vocabulary. These kind of specific ideas, and I'm going to show you some in a minute, OK, of exactly what I mean. I, in my lessons, if te when teachers observe me, often say to me, Russell, you spend a lot of time teaching the students how to study on their own. And the reason I do that is because they've only got two hours in class with me, but they've got many more hours on their own. So I'm interested in planting seeds of specific things that I can try and get them to do on their own, like reading a book, like listening to YouTube videos, like studying with Quizlet. Your idea is definitely connected to autonomy. I'm not denying that in any way at all, but it's more to do with though, those kind of ideas about students becoming more empowered in the learning process. So it's more psychological. Okay, it's all about them take, making their own decisions, them editing their work, them commenting on each other. It's not necessarily something that they're going to do on their own. So it's definitely in that Benson, because Benson has these three areas of, of control, the psychological, the specific ideas, and then the whole management of a school kind of thing. So it's definitely part of autonomy, but not so much the part that I'm talking about today. All right, just to make that kind of, just trying to get everyone focused, particularly on specific ideas, specific things that are planting seeds, yeah? Abdel Fattah, I'm trying to pronounce the name correctly. That's how you put it, yeah? Uh, hi everyone. Yep. Uh, to, to promote autonomy, I use a platform called Canvas. Students yep. sign up to the platform, yep. and there are lots of activities related to what we cover in class. And yep. students have to take the quizzes, and they receive automatic feedback by the system, by the software. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes I set up some activities that students have to do before they come to class, and when they come yep. to class, we discuss them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in Lovely. this way, again, yeah, go, please. So, Sorry. Yeah. So in this way, they learn how to how to learn. Yeah. So uh, by using this yeah. uh, platform, they can learn a lot of skills. They can gain confidence and learn how to learn by themselves. Yeah. Make use of Canva. Make use of the activities that are on there. Definitely. OK. Lovely. OK. When we're talking about. Remember, when we're talking about, uh, um, and you're absolutely correct. I don't want anyone to think that you're anything less than 100% correct. There is more than one aspect to autonomous learning, okay, to independent learning. I am particularly interested in the really specific activities that we show the students. Why? Because this is what I'm doing every day. And I'm going to show you now a few examples of what I mean and see, hopefully, Hopefully, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that some of you haven't seen the things that I'm going to show you. I'm just going to quickly jump over and look at some of the comments in the screen because people have been writing some really nice things there. All right. So let me just have a quick look at what people have written. OK, give them new vocab search for their meaning on Google. OK, I like that idea, Naveen. OK, that is a really practical idea that then they might learn to do on their own. So they might do that with you first. And then they actually might adopt that as a technique, as a method of studying on their own. So that's exactly what I mean. Lovely example. So Miasa, yeah, I give them links to aid learning and reaching the objective like Quizlet. It helps in learning new vocabulary words, TED Talks, videos, YouTube. OK, I love these ideas. OK, this is what a little bit what I'm going to be looking at today. One thing, me, the difference, just want to be clear here. I never give students lists of things to, that they could learn. I would rather take one thing like Quizlet or TED Talks or YouTube and actually do some activities in the lesson so the students really do have some specific ideas that they can do. The research and my own experience would suggest that often if we give the students like say, look, you could do this or you could do this or you could do that, they won't do it. Sometimes we have to be very prescriptive and really 
prescribe to them what they can do, especially young, especially learners who are big on, on, on the path. So I like all the ideas you've suggested, but I would do an activity in the lesson using TED Talks and open their eyes to it, plant the seed in the lesson. Then they might go off and do it themselves on their own, or maybe even a few times. The same with YouTube. I'm going to show you some examples in a minute, okay? I'm suggesting that sometimes... We've, and I've made this mistake, so I don't want to make myself exempt from this, where I've said to the students, look, you could do all of these things. I've listed and given them loads of websites to go to, but I've not actually done anything with those websites in the lesson. And then I've realized at the end, in the feedback, that the students never use the websites. Now I don't do that. Now I'm very specific. Say, look, I'm going to show you how you can use Quizlet. We're going to do an activity with Quizlet, or I might do it as a homework activity. But I'm giving them activities that they might open their eyes. Oh, wow, I can do that. Now, let me try to show you what I mean, okay? Let me just come back because there's some really nice comments here. So I really like that point that you've made, Miasa. And then we got here, Kira said, I flipped the class to encourage them by using Flipgrid videos. Also encourage them to collaborate in Wakelet. Yeah. Okay, the same thing, Kira. More these... Are these things that they can then do on their own? Or are we really, when we're doing those types of activities, allowing the students to make more decisions and get more involved in the learning process? So it's definitely autonomy. You're not wrong. OK, but it's more, again, the psychological side, the development of power of decision making. I'm more interested in specific activities that they can then do on their own. For example, if you teach the, your students to read a reader, and you do a reader in the class with them and you, you go through unit after you, you, chapter of chapter of the book. And every week, perhaps you talk about the chapter in the class and you do all different activities with the book in the class that you're reading. The students afterwards might think, OK, I'm going to do that on my own. I'm going to read a book on my own, I'm not with my teacher. I'm going to do it on my own. You've planted a seed. If you teach them to use Quizlet. And you teach them how to actually do all the different games. You've planted the seed. They might do it on their own. This is what I'm talking about, all right? It's a slightly different from activities that encourage a more independent way of thinking. It's definitely part of the same bubble. No doubt about that. But I'm really into the practical ideas. Let me show you some examples. And then tell me if you understand a little bit. So I don't want to make it. I'm not making any... Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want anyone to think I'm not saying that all your ideas are not connected to autonomy. They are. They definitely are. But I'm being more specific here about what I mean. Let me show you an example, guys. OK, so to just just to do this and to speed everything up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my webcam because I want this to really flow quickly. Please turn off your webcams, guys, because we're going to be, be just because it will just make everything run better. All right. Webcams off just for a minute, if you can. All right. So what's this? OK, guys, I'm going to do a, I'm going to search for shopping in English. OK, so we're going to look at shopping in English, shopping in English. All right. So I've just written shopping in English, shopping, something that we often have to teach our students. OK, now I get all these videos back. OK, loads and loads of videos that the students can find now. What about if I did this, if I teach my students, for example, go to the filters and choose only videos that are from four to 20 minutes long. Now, that's going to give us less videos. And now all of the videos are shorter, which is a good idea. Yeah. Even us as teachers, we're never really going to want to use videos longer than 20 minutes long. So now we've got short. We've got a different collection of videos because we filtered them. But now I'm going to show you another filter. Watch this. I'm going to choose videos with subtitles. OK, now I've got fewer videos, but all of the videos that I've got, I've got subtitles and I can see it says here subtitles, subtitles. So that is a really useful skill, for example, to pass on to your students, something very specific, teach them about filters. Now, watch this. Just going to check something, guys, before we. Yeah, lovely. OK, so. Watch this, watch this. Let's let's take one of these videos. Then let's take this one here. How to shop in English. OK, because we're doing shopping in English. So we know now that this video has got subtitles. So that's really useful this winter, for both us here for you. and, so how does of course, for our TV students. Now, of course, we have to put up with the advert. That's right. About that. 
YouTube is free. Really important that uh, we can we can uh, you know that um, we, well we want we want it to be free. So you we have to put up with that now. English. With now, brilliant. We've got this video on the screen now. Okay, that we could, I've got the subtitles. And that's a really useful thing. So you can teach students to always look for videos with subtitles. That's really going to help them. So I always do that in Polish. But watch this. I'm going to show you now something else I can do. OK, one thing I can do if I want to is I can click here and I can change the speed of that video. So I might use normal speed, but I might want to slow it down. Now, this can be really useful to students if they're working with native speakers. They might want to slow the speed of the video down, okay, and say play at only 75% of the speed. Now, let me just play that video to you now. Out getting lost without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like this fan who says that our channel is the best way to live and learn. So that's a really useful skill to teach the students. Maybe they don't realize that they can search for videos that have got subtitles. That's a really useful skill. And they can slow down the video. But what's this? We can even do this. I'm just going to put the speed back to normal for now. So I'm just going to put it back to 100% normal. OK, I do that, slow the speed of the video down often. Watch this, guys. I'm going to click here on transcript. OK. And I'm going to click on show transcript. So I'm clicking on these three dots at the end here, show transcript. Now I have the whole transcript of that video on the right hand side. Now, one thing is I can copy that. OK, but another thing that I can do that's really interesting now, watch this. I can click and play any part of this by just clicking on the transcript. It will play that part of the video. So watch this. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any I'm of our repeat. new lessons. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. I'm going to listen again. So, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. Isn't that useful? I can click on the transcript and play that part of the video. So I can keep repeating. Let's say I've got a pronunciation problem. OK, with um, subscribe. OK. So off I go. Sorry, so no, be sorry. sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. So, that, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. So be sure so to be hit, sure that, to hit subscribe that subscribe button, button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of keep, our I new could, lessons. I could repeat, I could listen to it and then repeat it myself and then play it again. I can actually jump to any part of the transcript. I can just click here and jump to that part if I play it again or shopping. Let's first look at two so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you or shopping. Let's first look at two So this is a useful skill to show to students the ability to open up the transcript and then to be able to use the transcript as a way of playing the video. That's really really useful. This is what I mean by specific skills and specific things that we can pass on to our students to help them to study on their own. I do this in Polish all the time, all the time. I search for videos with, with subtitles. I play them at slower sp speed and I often will just access the, the, uh, the transcript now. You can take this even further. One thing that you can do here, you've got the time here on the left hand side. If I want to, I can turn the time off. So toggle timestamp. I'm going to turn it off. OK, I don't need that. Let's imagine that there's a phrase that I don't know in English. OK, I don't understand. Oh, don't understand. So let's say, for example, I've got here the, the sentence. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button. So I'm going to copy that. It's just going to copy it and then I'm going to press control copy or you can just right click and press copy. It's up to you. Now I'm going to come over to Google Translate. So I'm just going to jump over to Google Translate. So I'm going to jump over to Google Translate. And in Google Translate, I'm going to let's imagine I'm a, I'm a Spanish person. OK, just for the sake of this. So I'm, I'm 
I'm I'm learning English and I'm I'm from Spain. So I want to understand now oh what does that mean? Yeah. So I can paste it in, I can get a basic idea of the translation into 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 Spanish. Okay. Okay, that, that's really useful, yeah? And also I can play the sentence. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also really useful. Did you realize that you could also do this? You can click on this button here on the star and add that word into the list of sentences that you want to learn, okay? So if I was to add that, click on that star now, that sentence has been added into my into my collection of we call it a phrase book or saved sentences now let's go back again and we'll just grab another one just for where we're going to just going to do a few we're going to do let's imagine i didn't know this sentence as well so now i'm going to jump back to google translate let me just make sure guys in the new share that i am trying yeah good okay lovely jump back to google translate and now i'm going to put in a new sentence that i don't know okay be endoist clip and then i'm going to again i'm going to add that to my phrase book all right, and then let's just do one more. So we'll add three phrases, that will be enough. So jump back again and let's just come back one more time. I'm watching the video, imagine that I didn't know this, down in the description. Okay, copy, and then come back again, and I'm gonna to go to Google Translate, I'm um, Spanish, and I'm trying to find out, well, what does that mean in Spanish? Because I don't quite understand the English. Okay, abajo en la descripción. Okay, and then I'm gonna add that to my phrase book. Now let's imagine that at the end of my studies, I think, okay, I want to study the words in my phrase book. I can click here and my phrase book will appear on the right hand side. Now we've only added three words into the phrase book, but we can see all of them are here. We've got the English and the Spanish, English and the Spanish, English and the Spanish. Now in your case, of course, that could be English and Arabic, for example, yeah, or English and French, depending. Yeah, so I can click now and I can actually listen to those sentences. Down in the description down in the description watching this clip watching this clip so be sure to hit that subscribe button okay now i'm just going to add one more because i'm going to show you a little activity in a minute so i'm just going to just do one more just to make this really clear okay so copy and we'll just add this one more in okay so just do one more word i'm going to add that into the okay okay and i'm going to add that as well so we've got four sentences now so we've been studying today and we've got these new sentences that we didn't know exactly what they meant. And that I've got this now ability and I can I often do this. I do, in fact, I do this all the time, guys. I'm continually adding words into my phrase book. Now, this is the magic. Watch this. First of all, I can open up my phrase book and revise the words. Some useful questions down in the description watching this clip. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now watch also, I can do this. I'm gonna click on this button here. And that is gonna import those words into what is called a Google Sheet, which is really like Excel, okay? Now watch this. So now I've got those words in English and in Spanish. Now the only thing I need to do, and just makes it easier to copy, you'll see in a minute why, is just open up the two middle columns, just make them nice and big so that you can read the sentences completely, okay, in just within the column, okay? So I'm just making them bigger. You'll see why. Now, what I'm going to do, I could have 20 sentences here. I've only got four, but I could have 20. I'm now going to copy those four sentences, both the English and the Spanish. But that could, in my case, normally it's from Polish to English. In your case, it's going to be from English to Arabic or from English to French. So I'm just going to copy those words, just going to copy them. Okay. Now, two things that I can do, guys. Watch this. First of all, if I use Quizlet, did you know that you can do this? Watch. I'm just going to jump over to Quizlet. Okay, I'm going to click on create. I'm going to click on create study set. And then I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this new words, English to Spanish. Okay. And now I'm not going to make the cards one by one. No, much quicker. I'm going to click on import. And then all I'm going to do, because I've copied those words, is paste in the sentences and click on import. 
And now I have made my cards. Now, that, I could have had 20 sentences there. I've only got four. And there they are. All the cards are made. And I can now start to play my games with them. Now, sometimes you need to click on the first word just so that it picks up the language. So it's picked it up now. It says Spanish and English. And then click on Create. And you've now created your Quizlet cards from your vocabulary in your Google Translate, which came from using YouTube, the study vocabulary. And this is what I mean by really practical, concrete ideas that we can pass over to our students. Now, most of the time I learn in sentences. I don't always, I don't like to learn individual words. That's not always true. Sometimes when I want to revise lots of words, I make lists of words that's only one word long. But most of the time I'm working with phrases. Okay. Now I can start to play the game. So if you click on flashcards and play the first game, the flashcards game. And one thing in case you don't know when you're working with Quizlet, you might not know this. You can click on options. And you can say, well, I want audio. So you can turn on the audio. And then you can say, well, I'm going to go to advanced. And I don't want the audio in English because I know that. Or I, I do want the audio in English, but I don't want it in Spanish. So you can control when you his listen to the audio and when you don't listen to it. Okay. And you can say, well, are you going to answer with English or are you going to answer with Spanish? So let, 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 let's leave it as it is. Okay. So you've got these things that you can do. And then you can start to play the game. Some okay. useful questions. Okay. Algunas preguntas útiles. And then click on to the next one. Abajo en la descripción. Okay. Down in the description. So you really, learning to, to do these kind of things is really useful. This ability to, for example, find the transcripts, take the sentences, put them into Google Translate so you can revise them, and then move them into Quizlet so you can play games with them. Now, interestingly, if we went to the word wall activity that we learned a couple of weeks ago, so I'm just going to go to wordwall.net. Okay, one minute. I'm going to go to my activities. If I click on create activity, and uh, we'll just do um, create activity, we're just going to create Okay, we'll just, we'll just do match up to make it easy. So I'm just going to click on this one here. If I now click on paste, I can actually paste in all of those words just in exactly the same way. Look, the sentences are already made instantly. Four sentences. Yeah, all in the English and then all in Spanish. Okay, so you can also take your words from your Google Sheet, which you've made in Google Translate, and paste that into WordWall. And this is actually what I also do. So if you come to my activities, and I'll just give you a quick, show you a couple of examples. So if I come to my activities and I click on Polish, you'll see that I'm doing this all the time. So let me give you an example. This is an example of an activity that I've just pasted the sentences in myself, and then I've played the game. This is like a, what I did here is I pasted in only the, the Polish, and then I just deleted the word out of each sentence to make it into a gap fill. But I did this from Google Translate. Yeah, I just took the Polish sentences in Google Translate, pasted them in. And then for each sentence, I just deleted one word so that now I created this gap fill activity. So having these skills, these are specific things that we can show to students to empower our students to study on their own and to work on their own. Very, very specific things that I do to show my students. Now I'm going to show you a few more, but I'm just going to stop a minute and just comment on that. Yeah. Uh, was that useful, guys? Okay. Uh, you can make it based on pictures. Uh, well, you could add pictures in as well. Okay. Obviously, you could. You can't do the same cup, copy and paste idea with the pictures, but you could, of course, add the pictures in afterwards if you want to do that. You can do that. As you know, you can do that in Quizlet as well, yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, I think you mean teaching the skill of learning on your own. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, look, look that is part of autonomous learning, okay? Students can't be autonomous if they don't know how to study on their own, okay? So it's a part of it, but it's the practical part of it, not the psychological part. 
a lot of the activities, obviously part of the development of students' independent learning is also their belief in their own ability to learn and to not expect the students, to, the teacher to do everything. That's more the psychological part, the empowerment part, isn't it? Okay. So students who are empowered, who feel they can make decisions, who want to be involved in the learning process, that's also part of independent learning. If you look at what Benson says, he talks about this kind of three key areas. OK, there's the psychological, there's a kind of management decision type, school organizational type of decisions. And then there's also the kind of the kind of more practical, specific activities that we need to pass on to students. Now, the reason I'm saying this, guys, is because as an educational technologist, all the time when I visit schools and work with teachers, etc., I always hear, ah, Technology can develop students' independent learning. And then I say, OK, so what do you actually do to help your students do that? And then sometimes teachers aren't that clear about what it is. What I'm saying is you need to build up certain knowledge, certain knowledge of things that you can do on YouTube, on Google Translate, on Quizlet, on Wibble, to pass that information on to the students, OK? These kind of things that we do. I'm going to show you a couple more. Guys, any more comments in the in the in the chat chat window? Do you agree with me? Do you see the point I'm trying to make about how we can make our students become more independent learners? Both everything you've said is right, okay? Both from a psychological point of view is also important. We've got to get the psychology right. We've got to get them to believe that they can learn on their own, to believe that they should be responsible for their learning. Absolutely. But also we need to give them specific ideas to help them so that they can actually do concrete things. OK. Uh, da, 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 da. OK, so let's go back. Anyone want to comment on what I've said? Anyone want to turn on their microphone and make any comments or any observations? Otherwise, I'm going to show you some more ideas, guys. OK. Okay, let's go back and we'll try to look at a couple more things. We'll see how far we can go with this, okay? So this is my big passion at the moment, the, the, the specifics. What is it that we're going to tell? You know, I do a lot of work around podcasting. I do a lot of work with YouTube. I do a lot of work with Google Translate. I do a lot of work with Quizlet, okay? So I'm looking at certain things, certain websites that I show my students. I'm going to show you a couple more ideas. Let me show you this one, okay? So I'm going to come back again. And come over to, uh, let me just close a couple of windows down, guys, just because I've got too many windows open on the screen here. Let me just, da -da -da -da. I'm going to show you something quite nice now. I just need to make sure we've got some space freed up. Yeah, lovely. Okay, we'll come back here. and just going to do one thing, guys, before I, um, let me just do this, okay, just to show you this one. Let me click here. Excuse me. One thing. Apologize. One, one minute. Just gonna just. I'm just tidying things up before I do this. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, this is really important. Another thing that I teach my students about, and there's quite a few, but this is another one, is how to make playlists in English. Now, why? Or how to make playlists in YouTube? Why? Well, playlists are collections of videos that you want to save together in one list. And I have literally hundreds of them. So let me just show you some of my playlists. OK, so, for example, I've got a playlist here of my favorite videos. That I found on YouTube to practice the present simple in Polish. So. I created a playlist called Polish Present Simple. And then every time I came across a video that was to do with the present simple in Polish, I added it to this playlist. So I have all of my videos connected with the topic of Polish Present Simple, all in a playlist. And one thing that I can do is, let's say I get on the train today and I'm on the train and I think, ah, oh, I need to practice the present simple in Polish. I can click and just play video after video after video after video. And it will just play the whole list of my videos from number one right to number to, to the last one. If I was 
do, maybe doing the same in English. I might have English present simple. And I wanted to share this list with my students. I could click on share. And then I could share the list so that my students also had access to that list. I have lists for everything in my life. I am a singer. And I have here my playlist of my favorite singing exercises. And often I will work through this playlist and just start from the beginning and play it. Or sometimes I will just play specific videos that I want to play from my playlist. I have a, another playlist of my guitar studies. These are all things that I'm learning on the guitar. Again, all of my videos about guitar learning are all together in one list. So these are super useful for students, but also super useful for teachers. And I teach my students to do this. Now, I'm going to just show you how this works. OK, as the last kind of activity today. Watch this, guys. We'll go back to the example that we were doing earlier. So let me just move this down to here just to yeah, good. Job. OK, so let's go back to that shopping in English example. So I'm going to click on enter. And shopping in English comes up. And let's go to this video here because we were watching this one. This looked really good. So I'm going to click on that video. OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, wow, that video on shopping Website in English. Visitors bouncing? I don't want to lose that. I want to keep it. I want to save it. So I'm going to click here. OK. And I'm going to click on. Sorry, I'm going to move this up to the top. Now, it's sometimes annoying this. This, this bar, I wish that it wouldn't, yeah? So I'm going to click here on save. So I'm clicking here, okay? And I'm going to click on save. And I'm going to create a playlist called Shopping in English. Shopping OK, now I'm, I'm not going to make that. I want to make that public because I might want to share it with my students. And it's, it's not a, it doesn't need to be private. It's just a collection of videos about shopping in English. OK, if it was about politics or something, I might make keep it private. But so I'm going to click on create. So I've now added that video into my into my playlist of shopping in English. But of course, there's only one video in there at the moment. OK, Look, let's imagine now that we find another video. So let's just imagine an, a week later, we're on YouTube and we find another really good video about shopping in English. And we think, yeah, 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 we need this one to be in our collection. So we, we, we're watching the video and we say, yeah, I want to save this one in my, in my playlist because it's such a great video. I really want to also make this part of my playlist. So you come again, click on the three dots here and click on save. And it's going to say to you, okay, what list, what playlist do you want to save this one in? I'm going to say, I want to save it in my shopping. Hey, everybody, it's Tony Robbins. Listen, we're going through some pretty rough times right now. Okay, that would be the so nicest I way of it. saying it. Now, I Tremendous it uncertainty in the economy, the inflation, concerns about crime. And yet, okay? in the midst of That's all that, done. there are people that always seem to, wait to okay? find a way to succeed. Not only succeed. Now, I'm going to do one more just to, 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 to highlight the point, okay? So let's imagine it's a couple of weeks later. And again, I come across this great video for shopping. And I think I want to add that to my shopping playlist. OK, so I'm just going to press the pause button a minute. So I come down here. I press on the button here. To share, click on save. And then I say, well, what playlist do you want to add it to? So I want to add it to my shopping in English playlist. So now that playlist has got three videos. Now, where do I find that playlist? Well, if I click over here and look, I'll see all my playlists. And if I come up to the top, because the newer playlists are always at the top, I should find there it is shopping in English. Now I'm going to click on that. And there is my playlist. Now I can share that playlist with you. I could play all three videos from that playlist, or I could just play one specific video, but I can share this list with you now. So I could click on share. Excuse me a minute, just about to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm click on copy. And then I'm gonna click on stop sharing because I'm gonna come back into the chat window and I'm gonna share this, okay? 
And if you were to click on that now, you would find, you would... Oh dear, excuse me, I don't know what's happening. You would have access to that playlist, okay? These are the types of skills Yeah, these these um, these types of skills are the sorts of things and more that you're going to learn this week. OK, different techniques that I use and pass on to my students to help them with their autonomy. One thing I've learned, guys, just to t in, make a really important point, because um, Pfizer's made the point about we can help students to save many words as they can. Pfizer, it's a great idea, but one thing I've also learned, honestly, this is a real lesson for me. You can't learn that many vocab vocabulary in one go. I will, just to go through it, I will often watch a video, take maybe about 10 words, put them into Google Translate, then shift them into Word Wall and Quizlet. I'll often put them in both, play games with them. I'll go back and listen to the same YouTube video again another time and then study those words. Yeah. Now, 10 is enough. Now, what I might do then afterwards is watch the video again. And, and you know, a week later, I'll take another 10 words from the video. So one thing I would really recommend is don't, number one, as much work on one video as possible is a really good idea because you pick up the pronunciation. It helps you with meaning. You're seeing the language, yeah? And another thing is limit the number of words you try to learn. Now, I have to admit, I'm always trying to push myself to learn more words. It doesn't work. I get so frustrated. Um, don't forget, guys, I'm working on this every day of my life i get up at like half past six, six o'clock in the morning and i study polish for an hour hour and a half every day on my own and i have lessons one thing i've really noticed is more than 10 words i end up forgetting them so you've really got to learn to restrict how many words you're trying to study in one go okay so really good, nice point you're making pfizer but also we need to encourage students to be very disciplined the point I'm trying to make, and you made some beautiful points today, everybody, yeah, who contributed, re and everyone was correct. No one was wrong. I was just trying to be more specific when I was talking about learning, independent learning. We often, and you'll see in the lecture when you listen to the, the unit, we call it extramural activities. What can you do outside of the walls of the classroom on your own? to learn a language, meet other students, listen to YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, study with Quizlet, etc. That's what I was focusing on today. Guys, I'm going to stop there. Was that useful? I hope that that was useful to you. OK, unit five will be open tomorrow. It's all about specific things that we can do with technology to help our students to become more autonomous. OK, really hope today's session was useful okay lots of practical ideas all right thank you for your contributions today your contributions today were excellent okay excellent remember what i'm saying there's two aspects to autonomy in fact there's three aspects but we've concentrated today on two the the the, the, the psychological giving students more decision making giving allowing them to be more independent in terms of the actual learning processes that are taking place I was talking more today about what specifically we can show students that they can do on their own. All right. Absolutely great session, guys. Hope you enjoy this unit and I'll see you all next week for the last webinar. OK, and I'll be sharing the recording of this tomorrow with you as well. All right.